Oh, it looks like things are going kind of right for him. It's way too early in the movie for things to be going right for our protagonist. I worry for the future. Not quite my temple. God, I'm, I've never been so triggered when someone says a phrase. Not my tempo. I want to murder someone. <laughs> it's like psychological torture. What, you're gonna waterboard him next? Dude, <laughs> this movie's stressful. Hi everybody, it's your girl Tofu. Today we are checking out the movie Whiplash, which has come highly recommended by you guys, especially those of you who watched our Top Gun Maverick reaction video. Now as a self-proclaimed Miles Teller girly, you know I had to take this recommendation pretty seriously. <laughs> I believe he's a musician in this movie and he's going to be like trying to navigate through the musician world. And as a like a former kind of casual musician myself, I think this could be a really fun movie for me to watch. Maybe I'll even have some insight. It's unlikely. Um, but maybe I'll even have some insight uh, to offer or maybe I'll just sit back and relax and just kind of enjoy enjoy a movie for two hours with you guys. I'm really looking forward to getting into this video, but before we do, I'm gonna take a moment to do a little bit of shameless self promo. <laughs> if you guys like our videos, whether it's the gameplay ones or these movie reaction ones, definitely be sure to check out my Instagram for other kinds of content. I do some modeling content and I also like doing cosplays a lot or like a lot is a very subjective word, okay? I like planning cosplays and I like executing them a little less frequently than I like planning them. But I'm really proud of all the cosplays I do, okay? I, 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 I... I take a lot of pride. I share a lot of my bouldering videos, like my rock climbing videos with you guys and kind of track my progress. And you know what, it's been a while since I've done like an artistic creative project that was um, done via drawing, but they're there. They're definitely in here. You just you just have to scroll a while to find them. Wait, it's Nathan Drake, OMG from Uncharted, the Unchar Naughty Dogs Uncharted series. Isn't that exciting? Um, that was 173 weeks ago. So yeah, maybe it's been a hot second since I've done like drawing content but it's there if you look for it. This was my Gwen, my Gwen cosplay. You know, having a background in dance just made that like the most perfect cosplay for me. Ellie from The Last of Us. And even though I don't look a whole lot like Ellie there, like I feel like I've captured her essence and her vibes. We did Tifa Lockhart. He is deceased, rest in peace Thor, but he was cosplaying as one of Wedge's cats. This is Dutch Vanderland. Well, actually I did a gender bent version. So this is Duchess Vanderland. Oh, I also do art restoration. I've done a little bit of dabbling before I did my magic on her. And then I want you to see what I did. Yeah. Oh, I also really liked the Sadie Adler cosplay that I did. And then I photoshopped myself next to Arthur Morgan. And it looks like so realistic, actually. And Rockstar actually liked this picture. Yeah, no, look at that. Doesn't that look fucking realistic? Be sure to check out my Instagram <laughs> if you're interested in any of that. And you can check out my Twitter if you're interested in my shit posting there. That was a very long tangent. God bless my editor. Hope they have a blast editing that down, summarizing that and whatnot. Good luck. I think with the very long self promo tangent out of the way, I think it's finally time that we can check out this movie. <laughs> Let's do it. Does everyone have their snacks? I have strawberries that I've cut up ahead of time because I'm lazy. They're a little squishier than I'd like because I should have eaten them a few days ago, but fuck it, we ball. Whiplash. Is it gonna get faster? <laughs> yeah, I can't dance to that anymore. <laughs> this already seems like a very artsy kind of film. The way he's in the spotlight, all the attention's on him, and the slow zooming into him. He's our focus, probably our protagonist. What a cool shot. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, stay. So you know I'm looking for players, then why did you stop playing? He looks younger here. Like his cheeks look a little more chubby and youthful, you know? <laughs> Sorry, I asked I'm why sorry. you stopped playing and your version of an answer was to turn into a wind-up monkey. He's a little intimidating, I gotta be honest. Double it. Faster. Faster. He just left? Oopsie daisy. Forgot my jacket. What an exit. <laughs> Schaefer Conservatory of Music, fall semester. Sounds like spy music. <gasps> the music kind of reminds me of Spy Family. Lots of green used so far in the color palette. No Swedish fish? No, not today. He must come here often then. 
Oh, he likes her. He totally likes her. What is he mixing with the popcorn? Is this his dad? We go to the movies together. Oh. I don't want the raisinets. Raisinets were in the popcorn? I just eat around them. <laughs> I don't understand you. I don't understand him either. More green. How you feeling, man? It's been so long. He's lonely, isn't he? Don't worry about Greg. It's a dick. Oh. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. Such a teacher thing to do. <laughs> yeah. A mystery figure watching them in the window. here while he's supposed to be directing them. <laughs> okay, so does he and this guy take turns on the drums? That's enough of that. Just back to the core drums, please. Wait, so is he spicing it up or something? What an aggressive entrance. Oh my god. Yeah. Cute. Cute? Well, you're in the first chair. Let's see if it's just because you're cute. Yep, that's why. Oh dear. Drums with me. Is he gonna want the other dude? No, 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 other drums. That was the only guy that talked to us too. He may not like us so much after this. Room B16 tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. So we got chosen, it would seem. Oh, he's smiling though. Look, I don't really know how- to... Is he gonna ask her out? Would you wanna go out with me? Please go away. I'm so sorry. I'm just Here. messing with you, I'm- <laughs> Oh, that scared me. <laughs> My heart dropped a little bit for him. Oh, I'm Andrew. Andrew he looks like such an Andrew, doesn't he? Seven on Monday. Okay. You want to meet me Oh, here? okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they've got the awkwardness down pat <laughs> of asking someone out. Oh, it looks like things are going kind of right for him. It's way too early in the movie for things to be going right for our protagonist. I worry for the future. Oh, he's late! Oh, he's gonna get chewed out or something. <laughs> yeah, he missed it, huh? Wait, he told him way early on purpose. I knew that seemed really early for a practice. 6 a.m.? No one practices at 6 a.m. Oh, he's messing with him or something. The instructor's messing with him or testing him or something. What a random piece of dialogue for the subtitles to pick up on. Oh, I really like that. Everyone's setting their cases down in succession. You can tune drums? Oh my god. I did not know you could tune drums like you can every other instrument. I should have known. Melt the cunt! What a way to request for a note. <laughs> He's punctual, huh? Yeah, so telling us 6 a.m. was definitely intentional. He did it to intentionally screw with us. <laughs> He's not like scatterbrained or anything. He was here on the dot. 19 years old. Isn't he cute? He is kind of cute. <laughs> All right, gang. Whiplash. Roll credits. <laughs> he said it, y'all. <laughs> Parker, that is not your boyfriend's dick. Do not come early. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's a little jokester. Wait, was that spit? <laughs> Now this one really upsets me. We have an out of tune player here. Is it the drums? Is it the drums because I had to tune the drums? Now either you are deliberately playing out of tune and sabotaging my band, or you don't know you're out of tune. Which is arguably worse. Which I'm afraid is even worse. <laughs> In his eyes, yeah. It's probably that guy, huh? Tell me it's not you, Elmer Fudd. <laughs> it's okay, play. Why is he sounding gentle all of a sudden? Is he gonna cry? <gasps> He's gonna cry. There's tears welling in his eyes. Yes. Then why the fuck didn't you say so? I've carried your fat ass for too long, Matt, so I'm not gonna have you cost us a competition because your mind's on a fucking happy meal instead of on pitch. Uh, why is this why is this whole thing so like militaristic like i feel like you can direct students to be their very best without being a dictator <laughs> like the way they all like stood up 
when he first came to the room and how punctual he was and the way he's like roasting them in such a like cruel sort of way like i'm sure in in some contexts this sort of training would be effective like if it was a life or death situation and i guess you know to be fair i think for a lot of people it very well could be considered life or death their careers the things that they care about their passions their interests like music so maybe this is necessary but i prefer gentle parenting like i would not thrive um in this sort of environment ever like the ruling through fear i just can't get behind it it's kind of fun to watch though i'm so sorry but i i feel for this guy people aren't perfect mistakes happen and but just not not in his band though clearly <laughs> you know what it's also kind of psychopathic that like did you see how his tone softened for a second when he cracked the joke about the elmer fudd joke and then it softened when he's like it's okay and then he screams red-faced at this poor kid like that th those are some mind games here the fact that he told andrew 6 a.m sharp instead of like the actual practice time at 9 a.m and the fact that he gave someone this false impression of gentleness and then full force screaming in their face like oh, th th these are some like these are some mind games mind games oh my goodness for the record myth was not a tune you were erickson but he didn't know, and that's bad enough. More mind games! <laughs> he picked on the weakest person on purpose. The person who looked the most scared. Oh, he targeted them. Oh. He's a villain. He's a villain, 1,100%. I think he's gonna eat poor Andrew alive. And just spit him back out again. Andrew, parents musicians? Gentle tone. You know, Charlie Parker became Bird because Jones threw a symbol at his head. He's warning him. The key is to just relax. Don't worry about the numbers. You're here for a reason. Say it. I'm here for a reason. I, d I don't even know where to begin, quite honestly. Like, th th that was, that was like uncharacteristically normal and, and encouraging. I can only assume this is another mind game that he's playing. <laughs> like another, another, another false impression that he's projecting. To, to poor little Andrew here who's probably falling at for who, d l poor little Andrew right here like look at him he's smiling he's just smiling he's about to get ripped to shreds like just ripped alive torn apart like I just I just I don't see this going well what he said to him right there after what we've seen of him previously it makes me think that he's gonna twist around the good things he told him and throw it back at him somehow the way he made him repeat i'm here for a reason like i feel like he's gonna just chuck it right back at him somehow like that conversation just did not seem right and the whole like have fun thing oh there's no way he's being genuine when he says that Neiman, just do your best just do your best i'm so confused let's hear some film i'm nervous Little trouble there. So he added a little bit of flair, I think, that he didn't like. Not quite my tempo. Downbeat on 18. It's starting to get worse and worse. Oh, man. Not quite my tempo. Uh. Rushing. Dragging just a hair. Oh my god. It, it is stressing me out right now to watch this. <laughs> like the pressure is building and building and building. I feel like it's about, I feel like the instructor is about to explode. Oh, we got it. Oh, we finally got it. Oh! He, he did exactly what he said he was gonna do. Was that a symbol? Did he just throw a symbol at his head? Why do you suppose I just hurled a chair at your head, Neiman? It was a chair. Start counting. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. If you deliberately sabotage my band, I will fuck you like a pig. He's crying. Are you one of those single tier people? <laughs> You are a worthless, friendless, flip little piece of shit whose mommy left daddy when she figured out he wasn't Eugene O'Neill. Oh my god. I knew that com He was gathering information to be able to weaponize to weaponize it against him. He, he didn't give a shit about the the background of his parents. Well, actually he did, because he, he wanted information he could he could wield against him. He was digging around for weak points. It's kind of abusive, Loki. Like, <laughs> like not just physically, because like he's slapping his students and throwing things at them. It is emotionally 
volatile, like the way he treats people who who are studying because they admire him or they want to be a part of this band. Like, oh man, this is I'm having trauma flashbacks. Oh my god. <laughs> The way he walked out of there, I feel like every one of us has had a moment like that. We've just got, you know, our ass kind of handed to us verbally or otherwise, and we just, we cannot wait to leave. I remember my moment. It was in college and it was um, after I just finished talking to the doctor I was doing research for. She was telling me, like, your peers have been just been telling me some really concerning things about your work ethic, and we're just like, we're really concerned. Like, are you kind of like in this or not? Like, <laughs> um, cause like, I don't really want my time wasted. And I was like, uh, <laughs> like I was so caught off guard and I could not wait to leave that room. Like I remember sort of feeling like frozen. I was just so like taken aback. Very petite, very put together and stylish, tiny little woman in front of me telling me how bad I was at my job. But it just, it wasn't the fact that she was unhappy with my work. Otherwise she would have just told me I'm unhappy with your work. It's the fact that like my peers had gone to her and told them that they think I'm not putting in enough effort. I could not get out of there fast enough. I could not get out of that office fast enough. And then I went to the bathroom and I cried. I cried in the bathroom stall for like 30 minutes because I just really wish that instead of immediately going to, you know, our higher up, our supervisor, I wish that like they had told me what, what they didn't like about my work. Like I felt so incredibly alone and I felt like no one was like, I guess, helping me really succeed in that environment or like encouraging me to succeed in that environment. And, you know, after watching this scene and after watching the emptiness, you know, Miles Teller is conveying in his character here, I get it. You know, part of me was thinking when I sat down to watch this, this film that like maybe I could relate to it from like a musical standpoint, but I think I'm actually relating to it in a, a different sort of way because I was more of a pianist, violinist. I didn't have any experience in like more of a band environment, you know, it was like I only played in an orchestra. Anyway, I'm getting off track here. I find myself relating to the feelings that the main character is feeling definitely more so than anything else. And my heart goes out to him because I just I've been there and the feeling of being not good enough. I wonder if by the end of the film we're gonna see him like quit or something because that would make me feel better than this. Devoting himself to something that just seems so unhealthy. Oh, blister? He's doing what he wants. What the instructor wants from him. Blood, sweat, and tears like... <sighs> Finally, a brief reprieve. When I wake. Jackie Hill, July 17th, 1938. Bob Ellis on the drums. My dad says that I have I have trouble making eye contact. Does he have a a bit of the tism? <laughs> I go to Fordham. But like what do you want to study? I don't really know. So Fordham was just like a random school? Why did you pick Schaefer? It's the best music school in the country. So they're very different, huh? Her reasons for picking her school and what she's doing right now in school is very starkly contrasted against how focused and narrow down his studies are at the specific school he chose. It's just a really interesting to see them side by side. I'm from Arizona. I'm from Arizona too. Oh my God, they're touchy. <laughs> Overbrook jazz competition. Uh, last time I saw you, you were very tiny. Hey, when you're a big college kid, will you come play in my band? Excellent, give me five, baby. All right. I sort of wonder what the real him is and if, you know, the, the display we just saw was rather performative. Maybe who he really is, is the jackass we see at rehearsal. Someone who's crude in language, um, cruel in approach, and abusive in um, a multitude of ways. Like maybe that's, maybe that's the real him. Or maybe that's just how he justifies his means to an end, which is to probably win a competition. I don't feel like what we just saw right there in any way really like softens his character. 
I think it was just a performance, that, a, a mask even, that he kind of puts on when he's not rehearsing with these poor victims that he's chosen and handpicked for himself. And I am not going to have my reputation in that department tarnished by a bunch of fucking limp dick sour note flatter than their girlfriend's flexible tempo dipshits. What a pep talk. I will stop being so polite. Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it's it's kind of funny. It's it's kind of not. <laughs> Let's go. Hurry the fuck up. Let's go. It's interesting that his intensity, Fletcher's intensity, transfers and trickles down to how like the more experienced students will treat the students underneath them, the less experienced ones. What a really toxic environment. <laughs> Hold on to this for the second set. I need to look at the music. Oh yeah, it's right here. I can only assume Fletcher fucking took it to fuck with him. You were dumb fuck! I dumb fuck! Tensions are high and there is stress in the air. I can't go on stage. I don't know the charts uh, by heart. Maybe Andrew does though. Maybe this is another another one of his twisted tests. I can't. I can. You know whiplash by heart. Yes, sir. Every measure. It was a test. Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> I am I am anxious even. I'm dreading this. <laughs> he's studying us? Is that who he's looking at? He seems satisfied, so he, his gaze has drifted off elsewhere. Man, they all look miserable up there. Hey, don't fucking touch my folder, man. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> Do not touch this kid. Is he gonna have an Andrew switch? Tanner, what are you doing? It's core only today. I don't have time for alternates. Ooh. From the top. Oh. Don't forget to turn Neiman's pages. He's been sidelined, and Fletcher was so disrespectful about it, too. <laughs> so rude and blasé, almost. Drive got named this year's MVP. Mm -hmm. Dustin is heading up Model UN, uh, soon to be Rhodes Scholar. And so I'll start planning competitions. Well, how, do you, how do you know when wins in a music competition? Isn't it subjective? Ooh. Are you going to tell me about your <laughs> The game? limp vegetable in his hand. They don't really get it, do they? I scored a 93 year I touched School down. record, school <laughs> record. It's Division Three. Oh. You think Carlton football is a joke? Come play with us. Four words you will never hear from the NFL. Oh, that is a roast. Oh my goodness. Do you even need to have dinner when you have all these roasts? Oh. I feel like I almost want to justify what Andrew was saying because they were initially so dismissive of his accomplishments while talking up all the other people at the table. So I almost want to say it's like <laughs> they kind of deserved <laughs> what came at them, which was Andrew's quick wits is one word for it. Neiman, stick around a minute. Are we about to get lectured? I recently stumbled across another kid in a practice room working on his double time swing. Mm. So I'm going to give him a shot. Am I late? No way. This is, this has to be another mind game somehow. I gave Connolly the chart this morning. All I want to do now is just uh, give you both a crack at it, all right? So, Neiman, go ahead, jump on the kit. We'll take it from the top. But but he's had... The other guy has had time to practice it all day, and he hasn't. This is already such an... Uh, he already has an, a, a disadvantage here. It's like a multi-layered mind game at this point. Fletcher is actually so thoughtful in his nastiness, you know, in his abuse. He's, there's actually so much, so much planning and care that goes into it. He's gonna be like, no, 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 all wrong. <laughs> Who could have guessed? He's unhappy. Not quite my temple. God, I'm, I've never been so fucking triggered when someone says a phrase. Not my tempo. I want to murder someone. Hey, do you mind? He almost smiled there. Did you see that? I think he's enjoying this, the sick bastard. Perfect, Connolly. He doesn't say that. That shit? Fletcher. Why no, would you do that? Now is not the time, I swear to God. Okay. I said not now! What was, what was, what was that phone call? What news did he get? He's like extra testy right now. It's like almost hazing what he does to Andrew, you know? This is why I don't think that we should be together. And I'm not going to be able to spend as much time with you. And even when I do spend time with you, I'm going to be thinking about drumming. And we're just going to start to hate each other. He's really thought this through. <laughs> I feel like he could have delivered that in a slightly better way, but... <laughs> I want to be one of the greats. And I would stop you from doing that. A distraction would stop him from doing that. And when I did see you, you treat me like shit because I'm just some girl who doesn't know what she wants. And you have a path. And you're going to be great. And I'm going to be forgotten. That's exactly my point. 
Oh, you. That's so callous. Why would he why would he agree to it like that? I get where he was coming from with that. He was trying to have an honest conversation about the possible downfalls of the relationship and where he sees it going, considering um where he wants to divert his focus right now. But I think there was I think there were ways to have that conversation without being kind of dickish. I think he's a little neurodivergent, y'all. It's just he's he's either an asshole or he's neurodivergent. I don't know which one it is. Oh. Fletcher's going to fucking break him or he's going to eventually go into burnout. Like this isn't tenable long term. <laughs> this golden retriever of a of a man just sitting there smiling so happy to be there. 6 years ago came across a kid in a practice room working on his scales. He barely squeaked in to begin with. He was really struggling. Is he sharing a success story with them? I whipped him into shape and I could do that with y'all too. I saw a drive in him and I put him in studio band. And you tortured him probably. His name was Sean Casey. Did he die? Did he kill himself or something? I found out this morning that- He killed himself, didn't he? Sean died yesterday. How? In a car accident. Oh. Oh, I thought it was gonna be something else. Are those tears even real? Or are they like narcissist tears? Is he even crying for Sean? Or is he crying for like a lost investment? Like a representation of a human that he saw as an extension of himself or that he invested so much time and energy and training and he just loses all of that when that person dies. Like. I don't know if these tears are genuine. I really, I, I can't get a read on it. <laughs> I wonder how he treated Sean. Did he yell at Sean? Did he throw a chair at Sean? Did he play mind games with Sean too? Is this another scene that's supposed to like humanize him? Cause I'm not gonna fucking fall for it. I'm not gonna fall for the manipulation or the propaganda. It's not, not quite right, Connelly. Uh, it's not quite my tempo. <laughs> I like to try Neiman on this. <laughs> Maybe he's like, I can't do it today. <laughs> I can't stand Golden Retriever today. No, nope. we will stay here for as long as it takes until one of you can play in time. Oh, we're gonna be here for a while then, huh? Looks like that might be all night. <laughs> Sorry guys, hate to put you through this. Oh yeah, I, I bet. Is that really the fastest you can play? You worthless. Fuck. No wonder mommy ran out on you. Get off the fucking kid. Bro, it's so uncalled for. Mr. Gay Pride of the Upper West Side himself. Happy Pride Month, y'all. Just play faster than you give fucking hand jobs, will you please? <laughs> Homophobia is so funny sometimes, I swear. <laughs> What do the other guys think of this? Like, have they all gone through this sort of similar initiation process? Or does he only terrorize and torture his favorites, like Andrew or Sean or whatever, you know? Let's go with the Irish Mick fucking Patty Cracker now. You know, you actually do look quite a bit like a leprechaun. What the fuck are you looking for? There's no pot of gold down there. <laughs> leprechaun jokes. <laughs> Neiman. They're all like bleeding and sweaty and exhausted. Faster! I was gonna make a dirty joke, but I thought better of it. <laughs> it's like psychological torture. What, you're gonna waterboard him next? Dude. <laughs> Neiman, you weren't the part. The part was probably ours the entire time to begin with. Okay, we can start now. It's so unnecessary. So like for five hours they were doing that? Like five hours he was torturing them like that before the actual practice not only do i think he's obviously abusive toward everyone and especially andrew but when he's specifically abusing one person it extends to all other people around that person like he will even bring in other people like, fuck, Leprechaun. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember his actual name. He'll bring in Leprechaun as like an assistant or an accessory to abuse in order to further fuck with him, Andrew. Like, <laughs> and he wastes the entire band's time for five hours while he's specifically abusing Andrew and the other two. And in a way that is dis that's so disrespectful to all the other people there because he's just fucking with these guys. He is devoted to his craft. I'll give him that. His craft is music? No. His craft is abuse, and he's damn good at it. <laughs> the the green is more uh, cool toned now instead of warm toned. I wonder if that's representative of anything. Day of Danellen competition. This movie's stressful. Fletcher's not gonna like that. Okay, I gotta get the hard road. 
I don't think he's old enough to rent her car. He left something. What did he what did he leave there? He sticks or something? He's gonna get into a car Oh, he didn't get into a car accident. That's in exactly eleven minutes. My band is on stage. If your ass is not on that stool with your own fucking sticks in hand, we can let Johnny Utah play the part. <sighs> it's not gonna work, is it? Are you driving this? No. He's gonna get into a car accident. Do you think his hands are injured? He's he's fucking lost it. And I blame Fletcher for all of it. Can he play? Fletcher's gonna let him play? Like that? Piece of shit. And there's blood dripping on the drums. <sighs> this movie's this movie's stressing me out, bro. Like I, I can't take the tension anymore. You shouldn't have let him play, dude. Like, <laughs> Demon, you're done. Oh, fuck it, you. <laughs> Why would they stop him? <laughs> I'd pay good money for this. I was really hoping he'd get a punch in. <laughs> oh, is this a disciplinary meeting? Does the name Sean Casey mean anything to you? Last month he hanged himself in his apartment. Fletcher lied. Sean suffered from anxiety and depression. His mother claims this started during his time as Fletcher's student. They expelled him. Would you characterize his conduct as extreme, Andrew? Yes. Did he ever intentionally inflict emotional distress? Yes. Do you think that I would let him put my son through hell and then just walk away scot-free? My man's got Stockholm Syndrome bad. He wants to go back to his abuser. A thousand percent he wants to go back. Now I wonder what he actually told her. Oh, he quit. He's quitting. Andrew? Just tell me what to say. I can't believe he actually did it. Summer. He's probably so much happier. Although my heart kind of hurts that Fletcher was so awful to him that Andrew equates all things drums with the negative, which is Fletcher. Like, Fletcher ruined Andrew's love of music. We still have a bit of the movie, so I'm hoping that it's not permanent. I'm, ho I'm hoping that he can find a way to love music again, despite what he had to be put through and what he endured from Fletcher. I hope he gets to kind of take it back. You know, take back the power that was like taken from him so many different times throughout this movie. I'm, I'm really hoping and praying for like an empowering moment where he chooses to play again under his own terms, on his own terms and not from Fletcher's. I'm honestly gonna be kind of miserable if that <laughs> can't happen. He's watching movies with his dad. Whenever I see them like sharing a movie together and eating popcorn, it makes me think of me and my dad. It makes me think of how much I miss him too. He's not dead, by the way. He's just back in Arizona. Scenes like this just really make, make me think about how once you move out of the home from, move out of your parents' home, there's not a whole lot of times you get to see your parents left, technically. A few times a year when you used to see them every day. I think I need to book a flight <laughs> out and, uh, and visit him. Because we love watching movies together. And he'll always make me dinner when we watch movies together. The simple things, doing the simple things with the people you love. And these scenes in this movie are a good reminder of that for me. That I need to call him and and I need to visit him soon. Because I miss him a lot. I miss doing this with my dad. Is he going to call What's-Her-Face? Oh, <laughs> he's going to call What's-Her-Face. Maybe he should pick up the drums in that way. Help him rediscover his love of music. He's gonna watch Fletcher play. I don't think we've ever seen Fletcher play. Does Fletcher also do drums? I don't even know what instrument Fletcher does. It'd be kind of funny if he also does drums. Oh, he does piano. For some reason, I, I didn't picture that. Maybe he does multiple instruments. A lot of people start off with piano and do like other things from there. Piano was my first instrument. This is such a relaxed, nice atmosphere. Like, how is he even comfortable in, in this? environment when he's not creating sowing discord and disharmony he almost looks nice and happy like not fake happy like real happy oh i hate him is he gonna see us 
He saw us. Is he gonna come after us at all and talk, or are we all gonna leave it there? Uh, they're grabbing a drink. I'm not a shaper anymore. Did he get fired from the lawsuit? Did you quit? Not exactly. Although why anybody would have anything other than peaches and cream to say about me is a mystery. Is he purposefully delusional? <laughs> yeah, okay, he's making a joke. Truth is, I don't think people understood what it was I was doing at Schaefer. And, and what were you doing at Schaefer? I was there to push people. I believe that is an absolute necessity. Well then, if, if he believes it's an absolute necessity, then by all means. So imagine if Jones had just said, well, that's okay, Charlie, ah, good job, end of story, no bird. Not necessarily. That to me is an absolute tragedy. I think his vision of people, his narrow-minded vision of people is the real tragedy here. I think people, and so many of them, have the capacity to succeed under different direction styles than what he administers, you know? Like, there are some people who need a more stern hand, I guess, when it comes to coaching, or instructing, but I said stern hand, not a hand that slaps them across the face, you know? Like, and I'm personally someone who, and we've, we've talked about this a little bit in the Creed video, but I'm personally someone who does really well with a really kind and nurturing coaching approach, and I thrive and flourish under those conditions, and if I were ever to be put in a situation like this again, I would just, I would just not do well. It's just not a way for me to live. And I don't think it's a way for probably most people to live. Now, this might sound really absurd to some of you for me to compare hobbies or goals or interests um, that we see in this film versus um, one of mine that I would like to talk about for a second. But just pretend, j just bear with me for a second, okay? For the past like two-ish years, I've wanted something so badly and it's to get better at Apex. <laughs> it sounds dumb, I know. But I've spent so many hours chasing after that goal. The people who have helped me accomplish that goal and continue working toward that goal, they were never cruel to me and they rarely <laughs> diminished me or made me feel stupid for not knowing how to reload or not shooting at the enemies and instead accidentally shooting at teammates or falling off the map or not knowing how to play cover, all the intricacies of playing and even being pretty good at a game like Apex, I learned through passion and shared interests. I think Fletcher's under this like misguided notion that people will only thrive if like fear is fueling their passion almost, or if abuse is fueling their passion. And I'm here to tell you, and I'm sure many of you guys can also feel this, like love and passion can sometimes just be fueled by its own. Like sometimes there, there doesn't need to be a catalyst for it, or sometimes there doesn't need to be a specific emotion driving it. Sometimes it can flourish by itself, or sometimes there can be positive things allowing it to flourish, but you don't need like a fear of being incompetent or fear of not measuring up or not being good enough or a fear of violence hanging over your head in order to accomplish your goals and be driven to accomplish your goals. Well, sometimes it's not always understood what is driving this goal of mine, I still go after it with like everything that I can possibly give it because it just means a lot to me. It's just so hurtful to see like people like Fletcher ruin people's passions and dreams, and in the case of Sean, people's lives, because he doesn't understand that. That you can have passion and drive and continue to work toward your goals without all the other bullshit he tries to add in there. There are no two words in the English language more harmful than good job. Oh, man. You know, maybe you go too far and you discourage the next Charlie Parker from ever becoming Charlie Parker. The next Charlie Parker would never be discouraged. The, the way he thinks is astonishing. I actually fucking tried, and I will never apologize for how I tried. He's so deep in his own delusion, he can't even see how terrible he is. The band I'm leading for JVC, my drummer is not cutting it. No fucking way. No fucking way are you propositioning me. I need somebody who really knows those charts. All Connolly ever was to me was incentive for you. An accessory to your crime. Tanner switched to pre-med. I guess he got discouraged. 
I, gee, I wonder why. <laughs> God, I hope he doesn't go back. Choose peace, choose happiness, choose love, choose joy. No, don't you, don't you, don't, don't let Fletcher be the reason. Don't let Fletcher be the reason you start music again. Don't let Fletcher be the reason you take the drum set out of the fucking closet. Hey, uh, Nicole, it's Andrew. I actually have this show uh, this weekend. It's, it's a uh, JVC thing and I didn't know if maybe you'd want to go. And He's unreal. <laughs> I don't know if I can come. I'll have to check with my boyfriend. Good for her. Is he actually going to go back to him, to Fletcher? Does he really have so much admiration for a man who has so little regard for his health, his well-being? I feel like this film is sometimes a little bit of a metaphor for just abusive relationships or abusive friendships even that can happen with a parent, a partner, a friend, you know, like... All right, gang, listen up. Now, for those of you who are new at this, this looks like it might be everybody except Cal. Wait, so with JVC, do they not practice beforehand? They just immediately go straight into performing? Is he just regular nervous or is he having like a trauma response, like a panic attack? Because this music's going to take him back to a different period. I think I'm fucking stupid. I know it was you. Did he give him the wrong songs or something? But first, we're gonna start out with a new tune by Tim Simonac called Upswinging. He sabotaged him. What the fuck you doing? He's making him look ill-prepared in front of all these other, like, important people who are gonna be deciding everyone's future in music. Yeah, I guess maybe you don't have it. And it just continues. The abuse continues. He reeled him back in. Also, he can just do it to him again. He's gonna go back out? No way. No way. He's just gonna fuck with him right back. He's playing the director. <laughs> now he's getting under his skin. Oh, it feels like justice in a way. Does Miles Teller like actually play drums? Did he have to train for this, or did he already play, or...? <laughs> oh, that's what he thinks of that. He just, he said in music, get lost. Go fuck yourself. That's how he's playing right now. It's, it's beautiful. Maybe on the overhead shots, Miles Teller didn't do those. But maybe on these, like, little shots here and there. It's probably a mix of both him and a, a stunt double player, you know? Kind of how they did for Black Swan. It's sick that like all these guys were accessories to Fletcher tormenting Andrew again. <laughs> Fletcher almost looks like he's enjoying himself. I am getting whiplash <laughs> from there to there to there to there. <laughs> I feel like he's playing for himself now. It just so happens to be in the middle of like a concert or competition for in front of a lot of people. What are you doing, man? I'll cue you. <laughs> he just told Fletcher that he'll cue him. I'm crying. And he just nods. What? Drum solo of a of a century right here. I love the detail shots that we get in this. Does his dad get it now? He fixes it for him. It's gonna go into another song. It's gonna it's gonna amp up, it's gonna ramp up. All the other musicians are like, what the fuck am I here for? <laughs> They're finally gonna be brought in. They're gonna finally be brought in, okay. We're not? Is that the fucking ending? Wait. You know what? This makes sense. <laughs> this this somehow tracks and explains so much of the stylistic choices that were made during this film. Wait, oh my god, it's over. Oh. What? That that's where they're going to fucking end it? You know what? I have I have beef with Mr. Damien Chazelle right now, y'all. No, I have I have major fucking beef with him. He has a real penchant for endings that do not give me joy. Truly. I felt like shit after La La Land, and I feel inconclusive after Whiplash. Oh man, oh man, I don't even know where to begin on my thoughts for this. Is that really the end? That's, uh... 
that's the end of it. So I guess uh, Fletcher got what he's always wanted after all, which was like a like a prodigy type, you know? He finally got a prodigy type. But at what cost, you know? Like, I feel like everything that we saw Andrew do, I'm sure those same results could have been teased out of him from a different teaching style, a, t a different teaching method that wasn't as hardcore and as draconian as Fletcher's. It seems a little pointless. In the end, Fletcher gets what he wants, and I'm sure Andrew gets what he wants, which is Fletcher's approval and him being a great musician, but like, what it took to get there, I don't know. I do believe that in order to be truly great at something, or even just good, there are sacrifices that have to be made, but I don't think one of those sacrifices that you should have to make is like your mental well-being and your mental health and and your life in sean's case like the mental anguish that fletcher put him through in the end he just gets what he wants he gets that student but you know what maybe it wasn't fletcher's teaching style that produced the student he's always he's always wanted do you know what i think it was i think it was fletcher's throwing back Fletcher's bullshit at him that really made the student that Fletcher always wanted. I think what made a good student for Fletcher is someone who not only tolerated the bullshit and welcomed it, but like just returned the same fucking terrible, terrible energy back at him, that negative cloud of energy that Fletcher's always hurling around to everyone else. When someone finally returns it back at him, I think that's when they both end up producing the results. When I think of it that way, it makes me mourn the ending of the movie less or more. Like, it makes me hate the ending less when I think of it, that it wasn't, in the end, it wasn't really Fletcher that made Andrew great. It was Andrew that made himself great. It was the fact that he kind of stood up to Fletcher, gave him the fucking bird. Isn't the bird the name of one of the, the really good musicians in this movie? I swear to God, it was. So when Andrew gave him the bird, he became the bird. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of poetic. I much prefer that interpretation anyway than any of the alternatives, <laughs> if that makes sense. I think overall, this was a really intense, really beautiful film. I love the way it was shot. I love the use of color, the, the green color palette. I don't know what it represented necessarily, or maybe it was just that they liked the color green for this movie, but I loved the use of color. The green was almost a motif throughout the entire movie. You just see it in every place, every scene. I see myself having to really, you know, chop this movie up for copyright reasons so it doesn't get blocked from YouTube, but I, I'm really sort of disappointed that I'm gonna have to because the beautiful long stretches of music that Andrew would play, and I've never been like a huge jazz person, but, um, which is funny because I, I loved La La Land and I loved this, but I loved those sequences where they're just playing music and nothing else. Like there's tension, there's, there's tension between the characters, there's emotions and feelings being felt, and, and there's so much to look at, but like it's just them playing music and story still unfolding and there's just those sequences are just really beautiful and i think they're really well done i really like the editing in this film there are times when it would really slow down and the pacing of the film would really slow down and there are times when they'd just like slowly crank it back up until it was this huge huge thing this huge amplified feeling when you'd watch it it's just wow i just i haven't watched a movie that made me feel like this in a while or i wish i'd gotten something a little bit different for the ending but i think i can make peace with it and appreciate for the journey that the movie took me on. It really put me through different emotions, different head spaces. At one point, I really thought I was gonna cry. Like when Andrew was in his room, he was ignoring the call from his dad and he was looking at, you know, the music around him. It was after he'd walked out to practice like that first time or whatever. I, I, almost, I almost cried when I saw him sitting alone in his room looking upset and it just, the film really took me through paces. It put me through the ringer. I think the finale was uh, satisfying enough for me. Uh, one, one critique of the film for sure for me is that um, Andrew didn't get to punch Fletcher. I was, I was really hoping like the drum would hit Fletcher in the head or that Andrew would be able to like really beat him to a pulp, but it just did not happen, alas. Oh well. <laughs> So many other things to appreciate about the film. It's really interesting how there's like several themes in here. You know, the director really begins to extrapolate on in his later work, La La Land. I think one of those themes being when Andrew is breaking up with Nicole and what he describes. I feel like Damien kind of took 
that concept and kind of ran with it a little bit more in La La Land. So I kind of liked that. I really liked seeing the progression of his films, I suppose. I didn't know this was Damien when I when I sat down to watch it, but it, it just makes so much sense stylistically that it is him with the color and the way it's shot and edited and the cinematography was just really stunning and like I mentioned it before but I'll mention it again the detail shots sweat dripping off like the symbols or the blood on the drums or like these these little close-ups of tears welling up in people's eyes like the way the movie even in those super high intensity moments it would randomly slow down a little bit and then speed back up like oh I really think this is a well done film. I think I'll give an objective rating of like a 10 out of 10. Actually, nine out of 10, because I like Disney endings, you know, like I like happy little endings with a ribbon tied around. No, wait, actually, no, this is the objective rating. It's a 10 out of 10 film. I give it like a, a nine out of 10, because I was stressed the entire time and I did not get my Disney ending. <laughs> Objectively though, I think this film was just brilliant and it was so funny too fletcher was so witty in his destructive comments my goodness it was kind of fun to watch him destroy the hopes and dreams of everyone around him god he's like the worst kind of villain too like they didn't give me any sort of tragic backstory on him they didn't they didn't allow me to sympathize with him even a little bit because of because at every turn he was just nasty and manipulative and abusive and he was a liar and he just used people constantly for his own sick twisted little mind games or whims like he'd use people to to prove a point or to encourage someone else or like at the end i think he's just very narcissistic because it's not that he wanted to help his students succeed that that's what it is that's what bothers me so much it's not that he wanted his students to succeed he wanted to be the teacher to, to a student that succeeded he wanted to be known as the person who instilled the talent or the the will or the drive or the passion or or he he wanted to be the person that molded someone who was not very amazing and, and molded them into someone amazing. He didn't actually care about his students. He, I think, cared about the prestige a prodigy student, a prodigious student would get him. I wonder if it's because he had any sort of like unrealized or unactualized dreams of his own that could never come to fruition. And that's why he like would, would almost want to live vicariously through student like maybe he himself wanted to be a prodigy but couldn't be i'm thinking of a certain coach in the anime haikyuu um it was the shira torizawa coach and he was short right and in volleyball apparently that's not always like a great thing he was short and he couldn't achieve his own dreams because i don't think it was a failure of him or his skill i think it was a failure of everyone around him who told him you're too short to play volleyball where our protagonist Hinata Shoyo, like, he's also of short stature, but he could thrive. He could be an, a tremendous volleyball player because of his raw skill and his passion to want to improve and be better. And because the people around him, like, I think still encouraged him to be the best he could be and didn't just write him off and tell him, you're too short to play volleyball. They'd be like, how can we make you a good volleyball player while you're still short? You know, so I'm wondering if that's kind of like Fletcher's deal, like no one ever taught him that he could be good at jazz or at music. That's why kind of Fletcher is the way he is, that like he never got to see his own actualized dreams and wants to live them out through his students. And in a way, the reason why he teaches his students reflects what he was taught or what his drawbacks were as a student himself. I wonder if there's something along those lines. I almost wish they had given me a little more on that front, but the story wasn't so much Fletcher's sad background that makes us sympathize with him or empathize with him more. It's it's less about that. So I can understand why they wouldn't put something like that in here. I just think it'd be kind of interesting. You know what? It's been a while since a film has made me think critically, I guess, or, or made me want to think critically. Some films make you think critically and you're like, I don't want to be doing this. Like, I don't want to have to, <laughs> I don't want to have to think in this way or think hard or work hard to enjoy a movie. Um, and some movies you can just sit down and enjoy with no effort. This was like a really interesting mix where like you can sit down and probably, uh, you know, enjoy this movie for 
what it might be on surface level. And if you want to, you can delve deeper and really analyze it or interpret it in a multitude of ways. And I think that's, I really like that. I really do. Even more so than the actual story of the film, I liked the experience that the film gave me and put me through. I think I've been talking enough. But I think I come away from this film feeling really happy with the experience that it gave me. Oh, I'm sorry for all my rambling, but I hope I was able to give you a fun experience of me experiencing the film. <laughs> I had a really great time and I'd love to take a look at more movies kind of like this that may not fit into kind of what we usually do. If you have any recommendations that you'd like to, to watch me watch, let me know. <laughs> I had a good time and I hope you did too. And until the next episode of whatever we're doing, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye guys.